Prabhath, the man who lends a hand to anyone he can. <laughs> Why, thank you. Mimi. Well, I've known you a long time now, Prabhath, and you've always been involved in numerous charities. I just wonder, is there any particular one that you feel connected to? There's so many great charities out there. Um, definitely Make-A-Wish Foundation. I always have loved Make-A-Wish Foundation. They do a ton of work with kids with cancer, mm -hmm. and they try to grant them their wish, which is why they're called Make-A-Wish Foundation. But um, what I love, though, is some of those kids may not have that long to live, so for them to have whatever their one wish is granted is just an amazing thing to be part of. And so I've loved you know, participating with them. Um, Liberty Hill Foundation is a great organization that I've been lucky to volunteer with for I think the last five years now. And they do a ton to help different organizations in the community. They give a lot of money to organizations. And Elizabeth Glazier Pediatric AIDS Foundation, love them. And they're, they're carnivals. You've, you've volunteered there. That's you've given right. your time as well, Mindy. Very fun event. Like seeing people um, dressed up in the different you know, outfits for the kids and just to see all the celebrities give their time um, you know, to participate in that carnival and to help at the different, you know, the rides at the carnival or the different booths. It's just, it's great to see everybody giving their time. So I love all those. There's a million more that I love, but <laughs> those are the three that just I'm thinking of right now, but I'm is sure I'm leaving others out that are great. Is there any particular memory you have helping out any one of those three in particular? I'd say there's probably a few. Uh, one that I remember uh, with Make a Wish Foundation is always so great because you deal with so many young kids that have you know different illnesses, and the kids were always so nice and they wanted they well, while they're on their shopping spree sometimes that'd be their wish to do a shopping spree. They always would want to buy you stuff, and I'd always say, "Wait a second, I'm a volunteer," and they'd say, "No, no, no, we should buy you something," Aww. and I always. I mean, I may have taken. No, I never took anything. <laughs> but I, the kids are great, and I always just appreciate that. Like once, it's like a nine-year-old kid who said, you know, we want to buy you something, we want to buy you something. And as a volunteer, you think, you know, like, what's better than this nice kid wanting to get you something? Mm -hmm. But one of the sad experiences, there was a girl, Rachel, who um, we got to go on her wish. It was a shopping spree and spent the whole day with her. And, and I kept in touch with her and her mom. But maybe it was less than eight, nine months after the wish, she ended up dying. So that was pretty sad. And the mom asked me to come and speak at her funeral. And yeah, wow. that was pretty tough. But, but what the mom said to me and the other volunteers was, you know, that was her happiest day, the day we did the shopping spree. So to be able to spend the happiest day of somebody's life with them and to spend nine hours of that day it's a, really a gift, and I felt really lucky to do that. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's still sad that you lose the, the child, but at least you can do what you can try to do to help them. And, yeah. and there's organizations that hopefully will continue to do more research and will find a cure to these illnesses, and the, we won't be losing these kids as soon. Tell me about the people that you meet while working, not necessarily the people you're directly helping, but maybe just the people you work along with, the other volunteers. How, how have those experiences been for you? The volunteers are always so amazing. I mean, it's, it's such a di different gap. Like, you'll see somebody who's like 60 who, you know, is retired, and they decide, oh, we want to give up our time on weekends. But then you see, you know, kids in college who are, you know, 19 and 20, 21, and they want to give up their own time. One of the things that I think of, though, that I love in all my experiences with um, different charities are the staffs. Like sometimes you meet the most amazing people. Um, there's a lady, Stephanie Sandler, that uh, works with Giving Back Fund. And I remember having a conversation with her where she just talked about how, um, what, well, what they do is they help different celebrities start their own foundations. And I had interned with them. And she said when they're helping celebrities start foundations, she really tries to stress to them, when you're going to do a big weekend, a big gala, you can do everything five star. But if you're willing to go four star on the cost of hotel or on limousine or if you can just cut it down a little bit that's that much more money that you can give to different charities or you know to your particular charity or you can just give back to the things that you care about so just understanding that and understanding that every dollar saved is another dollar that's going to go to further what you already believe in was just a wonderful you know she's a wonderful example and i appreciated my whole time interning at giving back fund so Let's let's take a trip down memory lane, if you okay. can think back that far to when okay. you were a wee little Prabhath, just growing up. Was there anyone who stood out 
that inspired you to take this route in life, to be such a giving person? I don't know how you can start or stop with that Mother Teresa, like somebody that lives every day of their life in service to other people. Like that's an amazing example. Um, but my modern day hero is probably Ted Turner. I'm a big fan of Ted Turner and he has this Ted Turner Foundation and he's part of the Nuclear Threat Initiative where they're trying to stop you know, weapons uh, proliferation. And so he's definitely up there. Love everything about what he's been involved with, that he created a CNN you know, at a time when nobody thought it would succeed. And that's something, obviously, I want to do with positive television, so I really look mm -hmm. up to him. And then you have people like Bono. Bono has used his name to get more attention for people in Africa and you know, issues like AIDS and poverty that aren't going to affect him directly, but he cares and he wants to do something. So I'm, those are my heroes. And then you have to love George Clooney for everything he's doing and Angel Angelina Jolie, who doesn't love her for everything she's doing, and adopting mm -hmm. all the kids she's adopting when... She could just live in a mansion and not be concerned about anything, but mm -hmm. she's she's been giving her voice to you know refugee rights issues for a long time. So tell me, is there been certain events in your life that has helped shape you as a person? When I was um, 16 years old, my father died from a heart attack. So I think at that point, as a child, you just think about like what's the meaning of life and death and who you're trying to become, and so I think that is a big shaping moment and then you know I was in college at the University of Oklahoma when the Oklahoma City bombing happened and that was obviously a big event for everybody in America and and then I was in New York visiting my sister and I was supposed to fly back on September 11th of 2001 so those are really big and tragic things but they definitely get you thinking about the world and what you're trying to be in the world and mm -hmm. and as you know I was a bone marrow donor in 2001 and yes. definitely that process of trying to help somebody and you know I didn't feel like I was doing anything that special you're just doing what you can to try to help somebody and then we would lose Anka a year, a year later so the process of doing what you can do and then losing the person this really shapes you and it just goes back to how you should appreciate every day but really make the biggest difference that you can possibly make and we're here in America where, you know, we're so lucky and our problems are so different than people around the whole rest of the world. Mm. And, you know, that's so much of what we're trying to do with this show and with this network. It's really getting people to know that everybody can make a difference. And if celebrities lend their voice and their name to a cause, they're no more special than anybody else. It's just that they have a voice that's heard much louder. So if we can get the, their voices heard more of these charities and organizations will get more publicity and hopefully mm -hmm. more funding and more volunteers and then they can just expand the really valuable work that they're doing. So 10 years from now, do you have specific goals as to where you would like your particular charities to be? I would hope 10 years from now, um, you know, a lot of the problems that we have now would be solved. Like we would have figured out a way to have health care not only in the United States but all around the world. We would have figured out a way where there aren't people starving and dying mm -hmm. from diarrhea in a lot of underdeveloped countries when there's you know pills and tablets that we could do that we could give those people to help them. So anything that I can do and you know we can do collectively to help those organizations you know, take the steps that they need to take to make things happen, I hope that I've done and I hope in ten years we can look back and say you know, we have a checklist, all these problems are solved, now let's focus more resources and more time on the next set of problems. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give, say, viewers at home that are sitting around watching you as an aspiring person doing so much, what would you tell them that they can do to help out? Something, you know, something maybe they're, they have no idea where to start. Where would you tell them? I think I always start it with, Figure out what you're passionate about, what makes you happy, what you're excited about. Like if, if you're volunteering somewhere, if you're volunteering at a nursing home, but you don't, you don't really like you know, older people, well, then that's probably not <laughs> the best place for you. I mean, we all love, I love older people, but I don't know, some people may not feel that that's the place. Or if somebody doesn't necessarily like pets, well, they shouldn't be, you know, volunteering somewhere where they're walking dogs or something. So it's figuring out like what is your passion, what mm -hmm. are you concerned with. And for me, when I was in college, um, I remember a friend of mine, you know him, Kareem Hamani, uh, mm -hmm. a group of us all said, well, what are we worried about? We're worried about hunger. 
So we volunteered at Salvation Army. We volunteered for a while there, and then we felt like, well, we're working, you know, we're volunteering at a soup kitchen, we're feeding people, but there's so much more that we want to do. And so what, well, what are those things? And then we thought, well, we want to work with, you know, kids that are at risk. So, you know, then we started volunteering, and we played sports with kids, and Kareem loved it. And, yeah, I think it's just figuring those things out, and you don't really know until you're out there doing those things. So I would tell people, figure out what you're passionate about. And if you can volunteer your time, whether that's help out, you know, you could help set up a website for somebody, or you could actually go into their office and help out on weekends or help out after school, and especially college kids, you want them to do a lot. But as, as I know about you, Mindy, you're running a marathon for a cause you believe in in June, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Just the process of training for the marathon and thinking about you know, how you can make a difference and raising money, which mm -hmm. is critical. But really, as much as raising money, you're exposing countless number of people to the issues of, of leukemia mm -hmm. and you know, the number of people that are dying from leukemia. So. That's true. That's true. That's very inspiring. Well, being around people who are making a difference is inspiring. So. Oh, practically a saint over here. Well, Prabhat Gotham, thank you for sitting and talking to me. Thank you, Mindy, and it's been a pleasure. <laughs>